Can you plug an XLR microphone into the 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter input on your mirrorless camera? I'm actually surprised this works so well. This is a Shure SM58 standard dynamic XLR style microphone plugged directly into my Panasonic GH5's 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter microphone input. Kind of. I'm using a specific cable and I'm actually surprised this works as well as it does. Let's talk about how I'm doing this, why I'm a bit surprised, if you can do it with your camera and or microphone, and if you should do this or not. Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel, and in this video we're talking about how you can, and if you should, use a standard XLR style microphone, either a dynamic microphone or even some condenser microphones, with your mirrorless camera using only the 8th inch TRS mic input on your camera, and without having to buy one of the expensive XLR modules for specific cameras like the Panasonic DMW XLR1 or the Sony K3M? Well, apparently the answer is yes, you can. All you need is a specifically wired cable that adapts from female XLR down to a 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter TRS plug. I'll cover this cable more in just a bit because again, it needs to be a cable that's wired in a particular way. And I'll also talk about some reasons I don't think you should do this at least on a regular basis, but it does work and it seems to work quite well. I also did a video on how you can use any XLR microphone with your camera's 8th inch input in a slightly different way using a Shure X2U USB audio interface, but depending on the camera, again, you can adapt most standard XLR microphones down to that 3.5 millimeter TRS plug and use it directly with your camera. So to do this, you'll need a simple cable and some audio knowledge so you can listen for any problems because this method is more susceptible to some audio issues. The cable you will need is one like this, which is female XLR on one end and 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter TRS on the other, that's tip ring sleeve. However, this cable is wired very specifically inside. Remember that an XLR microphone sends out a balanced signal, but most of the 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter inputs on our mirrorless style cameras are not balanced inputs. They are unbalanced stereo inputs. Because they are stereo, they are still expecting a three connector plug, a TRS or tip ring sleeve plug, but they are expecting the left on the tip, the right signal on the ring, and the ground signal on the sleeve. If they get a balanced signal, they may not record the audio properly, or at the very least, you'll have a lot more work to do in editing. So we need to figure out how to unbalance a microphone signal just before it enters the camera and give the camera a stereo signal. And we can unbalance this microphone signal with this simple cable. And even though it's a relatively common cable, it is not wired one to one from end to end. This cable takes the balanced output from the XLR end and it drops the cold signal from pin three and duplicates the hot signal from pin two on the XLR side over to pins two and three or the tip and ring on the TRS side, giving the camera the same positive or hot signal on both its left and right audio channels, the tip and the ring of the TRS plug which is what most 3.5 millimeter inputs on cameras like the Panasonic GH5 and like the Sony a7 III, etc., are expecting. Fairly simple, and now that's what we've given the camera with this cable. If you used a one-to-one -one cable which delivers all three of the XLR pins to the corresponding tip ring sleeve on the plug end, then what you would end up with when your camera records is left and right signals that are out of polarity with one another. And it's going to sound weird in your headphones. And, and when you open up this file in your software, the left and right signals are going to be out of polarity with one another, or some say out of phase. And even though you could mute one of the channels in your software, I'd rather just record it properly to begin with. And again, keep in mind that not all cables that look like this are created or wired equally. For example, this other XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable looks identical in terms of the XLR and the TRS ends. Both of the eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter ends of these cables have a tip ring sleeve configuration, but this one is wired one to one from this end to this end and will deliver a balanced audio signal to the TRS end with the hot signal on the tip, the cold signal on the ring, and the ground on the sleeve. This is the cable you would need if the eighth inch input on a device is expecting a balanced signal. But again, our mirrorless cameras are usually not expecting balanced signals. They are expecting unbalanced stereo signals. So this is the cable we need. So now when we send the signal using this adapter cable to our camera, the camera's left and right channels get the exact same signal in the same polarity on both its left and right signals to record with the video file. Now, this method and cable will work with regular dynamic microphones, again, like the Shure SM58. And yes, we are using it right now. 
And yes, it is recording directly into the Panasonic GH5. And it will work with XLR style condenser microphones if that condenser microphone has an option to put a battery inside the mic. So if the condenser mic does not have a place to put a battery inside, this cable isn't going to work. Because remember, XLR style condenser microphones require 48 volt phantom power and 1 8 inch mic inputs like the ones on your mirrorless camera cannot supply the full 48 volts. But some condenser microphones, like this Shure PG81 or even the Rode NTG2, have the option to put a single AA battery inside like this. And in these types of mics, the battery provides the phantom power to the mic instead of the phantom power coming from an XLR input. So if you have a microphone that can take a battery, then you can use this type of condenser microphone with your eighth inch input on your mirrorless camera using the adapter cable. And here's an example. And here's a quick example of me recording using my Shure PG81 that has its internal battery installed and the microphone is on using the adapter cable recording directly into my Panasonic GH5. Sounds pretty good actually. So scientifically, this is not hard to understand as the proper cable just delivers the signal from a balanced microphone over to the camera's unbalanced input in the proper way by dropping the cold signal from the balanced connection and making pin three or the ring of the TRS end the same hot signal from the microphone. The main reason I'm surprised that this works so well is the fact that the cameras that I'm testing actually have enough gain in them to properly amplify the signal from a microphone like the Shure SM58. Although I guess I shouldn't be surprised as it is a microphone input. So it is designed to amplify a mic level voltage signal up to line level for the camera to use. It is a preamp after all. I just didn't really think that these style of cameras had enough gain in their preamps to do this effectively. Guess I was wrong. So as you can see in here, this relatively common adapter cable works but you should be extra cautious and diligent when testing, setting gain, and listening with a good pair of headphones to ensure your signal is strong and clean. Because here in a bit, I'll show you some unexpected problems that I encountered. Some reasons why this is not a great idea to do. Number one, eighth inch slash 3.5 millimeter connections can be more loose and less reliable than an XLR connection. Even this cable that I have, the plug itself seems the tiniest bit smaller in diameter because this specific cable is loose in almost any plug that I plug it into. I think it's just this brand's slight difference in manufacturing or the fact that I've used it a lot that make my copy not as tight fitting. That doesn't mean all cables of this type are loose, just this particular one. It's loose in both my GH5 and my Sony a7 III and it's even loose in eighth inch couplers and extension cables. So get a quality cable and you should be just fine, but it's something to be aware of. Now, because of the less secure 3.5 millimeter TRS connection type, you should always strain and relieve your cables, either with some sort of camera cage that has cable grips or by tying off your cables to the tripod high up and close to the camera so they don't put any downward pressure on the ports, which could damage the ports over time and reduce their lifespan. I always strain and relieve my cables and always recommend that people do so. It will make your equipment and your ports last longer. Number three, 3.5 millimeter ports like these on most cameras don't have the best preamps and therefore they almost always have more noise or a louder noise floor and that noise is still going to be there even if you're using an expensive mic because you're still using the typically noisier 3.5 millimeter preamp. Number four, if you're using a condenser mic that can be powered by a battery like this Shure PG81, it still doesn't have a battery indicator on the mic and most of them don't. So there's no telling how much battery power is left or when this microphone is going to die. You just don't know when the audio signal will just stop. It could be during your recording and you'll have to stop, replace the battery, tell the talent to restart and restart. Number five, radio frequency and or electromagnetic interference. Remember that we are having to use an adapter cable to unbalance the mic signal just before it enters the camera. And the reason that microphones and XLR cables are balanced is because balanced cables cancel out most of the noise that's picked up by outside interference. Balanced cables shield the signal from that noise. But this cable unbalances our signal for however long that cable is, making it more susceptible to picking up noise. And that noise can get into the audio stream and into the recording. I didn't really think this would be a problem, but during my testing, I had a very odd interference issue that caused buzz in my audio signal. Behind me, I have some Edison style lights. They're not on right now, and I'll turn them on in a second. And they're actually LED, they're not incandescent. 
they're just decorative. I use them for videos, et cetera. And they're on a manual dimmer. And the whole thing is plugged into a smart plug that I can control through Apple HomeKit with my iPhone. And when I was setting all this up, I decided to extend the length of the adapter cable by using a three foot, one eighth inch extension cable for some more reach. But that now meant that I had three feet of unbalanced cable instead of only about one foot using just the adapter cable. Plus this adapter cable is just thicker and most likely has a bit more shielding. So when I turn on my Edison lights, this happened. Turn on Edison lights. A really bad buzz or noise got into my audio stream, most likely caused by wireless signals or magnetism put out by the lights, the dimmer, or the smart plug. Hang on. Turn off Edison lights. Much better. All right, lights are off, buzz is gone because I removed the extension cable from my setup. So as you heard, that noise or interference was picked up by the unbalanced portion of my cable and presented itself as a buzz in my audio signal. And it went away when I got rid of the extension cable, proving that it was the unbalanced extension cable that was picking up the noise. So keep the adapter cable as short as possible to mitigate these potential issues and always, always listen to the audio signal with a pair of headphones. Do not just rely on your audio meters. I'd really only use this option if I had no other options available. You'll probably get much better results with a dedicated external recorder or using a camera or XLR module with a proper XLR input and preamps on it. But as a proof of concept, this simple adapter cable and method will work in a pinch. Just remember to keep your conversion cable or the unbalanced section as short as possible and keep your balanced signal cable, that is your standard XLR, as long as possible before you convert it. That will ensure there's less chance for noise or interference from outside radio frequencies or electromagnetism that can end up in your audio signal as buzz or hum. And sometimes this is just the equipment that you're left with in front of you. Maybe the audio person has a microphone or an XLR cable and you have an adapter cable. You don't have a wireless mic or you don't have an expensive shotgun mic. You don't have a wireless lav pack. But I can look at it and see that I can take this and that, use my MacGyver skills to put everything together to come up with a good result on the fly. I think that's the sign of a really good craftsman, no matter what their craft is, rather than just throwing their hands up and saying, I can't do it. I don't have the right tools or I don't have this mic or that camera. I like seeing people use their skills to come together and solve a problem. And that's what this little test and example is about, using what you have to get the job done. And that's about it. Good luck. Happy recording. See you later.